What is going on guys, it is WrestleGamia here, back with another video. Now for all the flack we've given the WWE 2K series recently, we have to admit they've included some fantastic features in their titles over the years. Now they're not alone in this, and of course, looking at all wrestling games out there, they seem to have added something new and original to the experience, even if most players didn't want to play as RoboJax vs Buddy Murphy. It only makes it all the more upsetting than when some of these great features get removed from future titles, often without explanation. By cataloging some of the best lost features here, we're hoping that maybe it will entice some of the decision makers to bring them back for future entries should they come across this video. We highly doubt it though considering how much we've slagged off WWE 2K20. But anyway, be sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell because today we're looking at 10 of the best features removed from wrestling games. Number 1. GM Mode Yeah, every year fans will complain when GM Mode fails to return to the latest iteration on the 2K series, and there's good reason why. It was routinely one of the most fun features on the series, allowing players to act as the general manager of their own chosen brand. As the general manager, they would be responsible for drafting their roster, booking their show, keeping talent happy, and managing finances as they went on, something which required a deft touch to master. They would compete with the other brand for the fan support, something which added a lot of replayability to the games. Sadly, the feature was removed in SmackDown vs Raw 2009 and hasn't reappeared since. With fan love for it continuing to be high after all these years, it's baffling that it hasn't seen a return as of yet. If visual concepts really wanted to get the public back on their sides after the disaster that was 2K20, we think now would be the perfect time to reintroduce this into the series. Number 2. Create a Feature and Create a Story We've all lost endless hours in different wrestling games creation suites over the years, sitting up late and perfecting our characters all the way down to the tiniest possible specifications before unleashing them into the ring. Creator character mode has thankfully remained a staple of wrestling titles, but one thing that we haven't seen since 2K14 is options for Creator Finisher and Creator Story. These added a lot of fun, the former letting us flex our creative muscles in often the most ridiculous ways, while the latter helped to keep the game's story modes fresh even after you'd long ran through all the pre-programmed options. Given that Creator Wrestler is still part of the 2K series, it seems puzzling as to why the others were removed and there doesn't seem to be any real reason for this. We can only hope they'll return in the future one day. Number 3. Special Guest Referee Matches Now we've all loved and hated this match mode in equal measure. It can be a lot of fun to play through a special guest referee match if there are more than two people involved, as it can lead to a lot of comedic attempts to forge alliances with the ref in order to gain favour with them. That being said, it can also be frustrating as all hell when your friend screws you over by not counting the three after you hit your finisher, not to mention those beautiful slow counts that they do. And we're sure that this has led to some real life disagreements. We'd love to see these matches return to the 2K series, but unfortunately they've been MIA since 2K14, and with the exception of them appearing a few times during the game's story modes, there's no sign that they're going to be returning anytime soon. It seems like a terrible missed opportunity, and once again, there's been no concrete reason given for their removal. Number 4. Climbing the Stage One of the things we all fondly remember doing while playing Smackdown Shut Your Mouth was selecting the Smackdown Arena and fighting our way down to the entrance ramp so we could climb the iconic fist and brawl with our opponents on top of it, even throwing them off and then jumping from it to attack them further if necessary. We always remember hitting the 5 star frog splash from the top but never managing the target down below, leading them to do a somewhat spin rooney on the ground. Sadly, this feature was removed for the following entry in the series, Smackdown Here Comes the Pain, and stage climbing has never seen a return to the franchise since. Now we understand that modern WWE stages generally aren't as unique looking and don't always provide easy routes for climbing up them, but surely 2K could at least consider including some classic arena options such as the aforementioned Smackdown Fist just to let us do this one more time. The Smackdown Fist wasn't the only one you could climb up, you could also climb up the King of the Ring throne and also the Rebellion stage. Number 5. Holding on to Submissions One of the most controversial changes to the control system in the WWE 2K series over the years has been the way submissions have been completely overhauled multiple times, each time ultimately ending up being less intuitive than the last. 
from WWE 12's use of the breaking point system to later entries, attempts at making a more realistic mechanic out of the whole process by adding a minigame that utilised the analog sticks, the series has never quite managed to get submissions right in our opinion. One detail that definitely needs to make a return was notably seen in SmackDown vs Raw, where they allowed the player to hold on to a submission for a count of 5 after your opponent reaches the ropes. It was a nice way to deal that little bit of extra damage on them, and really heal it up if you felt so inclined. Little touches like this really made the game feel more realistic. We'd love to see these return in future titles. Number 6. Blood Physics With the WWE going down a more PG route in recent times, blood has been severely toned down if not entirely removed from the product ever since, and this is something which also extends to their video games. Now we understand the company's reasons for this, but as we've seen in the likes of AEW, blood can, when used sparingly, be a powerful storytelling tool, and it would be nice to see it included in future games to the level it was in the likes of 2K16, where rather than just appearing as a non descript red patch on your character's model, the blood would flow and drip over your body realistically to give that game that extra added sense of realism. We understand the hesitancy in providing this kind of mechanic to young kids, but visual concepts could always include an option to turn it off in the game's menus for a more concerned parent out there. If we're being honest, this one probably won't return, but it's maybe something a future AEW game could think about including. Number 7. Weapon Physics one of the things that have really devolved in some of the more recent entries in the 2K series is weapon physics. At one point in time you could do things like lean tables and ladders against the ropes, or watch as your opponents realistically reacted to hitting their steel steps. Now things just seem to be a lot more simplified and a lot less fun as a result. Not only will wrestlers no longer react to being slammed onto weapons, but even tables won't shatter as satisfyingly anymore when you're driven through one. Sometimes they won't even break at all in fact. You can't even do a dive off a ladder through a table anymore. Similar to previous entries in this video, there's no real reason that this should have been removed other than the lack of effort and care on the developer's part. While we're on that note too, we'd love to have the option to use weapons even after they've been broken again. That was a really fun little detail that's fallen by the wayside. Number 8. Character Specific Cutscenes in Universe Mode One of the easiest ways to add a bit of replayability to our fighting game is to give each character something different in terms of their in-game story. This has worked for the likes of the Mortal Kombat series over the years and was once used to great effect in the WWE 2K franchise too. We remember playing through older titles and getting to see alternate storylines depending on what character we'd chosen and how it made us want to go through it again with someone new as soon as we were done just to see what would happen differently. Sadly, this has been another victim of the increased homogenization and lack of care given to the series over the years as we'll simply get the same template story no matter who we're playing as. It's pretty symbolic of WWE as a whole right now to be honest, where few people feel unique and everyone looks to be eternally on the same level with no opportunity to break out. We would really love to have the Road to WrestleMania story mode back, as at least it offered some different scenarios for each specific wrestler. Number 9. Casket Matches Ok we get it, a casket match hasn't really been seen in the WWE since the Greatest Royal Rumble when The Undertaker went up against Rusev. But that being said, why can't we still have the casket match playable in WWE video games? That or the more recent iteration, the Buried Alive matches, which hasn't been seen since SmackDown vs Raw 2008. Now that The Undertaker and AJ Styles are having a Boneyard match, which is another way of saying casket or Buried Alive match, we should have this feature return in the next WWE video game. And number 10, Preset Movesets One of the most baffling removals from WWE 2K20 was the preset movesets in the game's creation suite. This was always a welcome addition as it was a sneaky way of including some characters that weren't officially in the game. These movesets were often very similar to that of popular wrestlers not featured and if the player was up to a bit of tinkering with the look of the character, this made it look easier to create them and make them feel like the real person. They were also given code names such as American Dragon for pre-WWE Daniel Bryanson or Bucking Trends for the Young Bucks so fans could easily figure out who they were referring to. We're not exactly sure why they removed this from 2K20 as it didn't appear to be breaching any trademark issues. We can only assume it was just another one of the many casualties that came as a result of a rush job on the title. This one is an absolute must to return in 2K21 as far as we're concerned. But there you have it guys, 10 of the best features removed from wrestling games. What other features should return to wrestling games? Let us know in the comments down below, subscribe if you haven't already, 
Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.